Hey everyone, how's it going? So I'm very excited to share another React tutorial using style components and we will be creating a, as you can see, an incrementer control. So it's got this plus and minus buttons. When it reaches the top, it's going to disable itself. When it reaches the bottom, then it's going to, you know, disable that button, pretty standard. So you can uh, use this in any of your project if you want. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. All right, so I guess we shall begin. And what I have going here is the style.css. And I have the app class and just up to the body, I've applied some, you know, basic margins, zero, zero padding, and then the background color and a height of 100 VH, nothing special here. Uh, over here, I have some dependencies. So I'm using, uh, I'll be using Font Awesome. Uh, I have them installed here. I had one tutorial where I covered how to install these, so you can watch that. And the other thing I have is style components. I will be using uh, style components so in case you don't know about it. Well, here's your chance to learn it. So go ahead and just type in the dependency name here and you know, it'll be installed. If you're doing this on VS code, you can just use NPM install. Either way, it's fine. Anyway, so let's come here. Here's our app.js, pretty blank. Uh, I'll come over here and create a new uh, folder and uh, let's call it incrementer. This is going to hold all the uh, code for our uh, incrementer component. Within that, I will create the incrementer uh, class, so or function, I should say, incrementer.js, and then I'll say function incrementer. And for now, uh, let's just, uh, I guess, return, you know, uh, incrementer. And what I'll do is I will just export this because you want to export stuff. If you want to use it, I'll save it. I'll come back in my app.js and let's uh, let's use it. So I'll say incrementer, save it, and boom. So that works. Uh, failed to in da 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 ah, That's fine. So, um, so there you go. You got that going. So now we can start adding the rest of stuff okay so the way uh, i see this is i'll just come here and organize some stuff i'll just parentheses to wrap everything i like so okay so what we'll need is a container then within that container we're going to have uh so the structure that usually uh, you have is something like um you know a minus button then you have a value and you have a plus button. So we will just follow this structure. Okay, so to, we'll create the container first. And for that, we'll use our nice style div. So let's import styled from style components. And then I'll come here. I don't need this. So I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so I'll create a cons. I'll say container. And then I'll say style dot. It's gonna be a div, not dev, div. And we'll use the back tick. So the if you don't know what this is, so pretty much what you you're actually just calling a function, uh, like like uh, like so. That's that's what it is. There's a name for it. I think template something something. Uh, you can go on these uh, style component website and read about it. Okay, so it is going to be a flex because we want to flex some. And then uh, let's also center them stuff. Okay, so once that is done, then so that actually when you do this, that creates a component, uh, just like a React component. And what that means is then I can come here and I can say container, I like a so. Container, I close that off like that. And then I can actually, you know, put anything I want since it's a container. So test and that should render. Yay, nice and center. Okay, so with the container done, let's see if I can bring this here. So now we have the container. Uh, within that, we will need two buttons in a value field to increment and decrement the stuff. So, I mean, we could create a normal button, but we could also uh, create a, a little bit of fancy button. So to do that using style components, you can just come here and say button is equal to style dot button and the same kind of deal. Really takes. 
All right, so when user click on, I mean, uh, hover over this button, we want to make the, turn the cursor into a pointer. So I'll say cursor is pointer. And we want to have a display of flex. I just love flex. I throw it all over the place. And we'll give it a, oh, let's give it a height of 100%. And then let's, uh, let's make it transparent. We don't want to show any background. Uh, color, transparent. And let's also remove the border from it. We don't want to show any border. Uh, let's throw in some font size. I'll say 1. I don't know 5 em or rem, and then no padding. And let's give it some height, pixel, and let's give it some font size 3 rem. I guess. All right. So now I'm going to come here, and I can say button. And believe it or not this should render a button well there's nothing in it haha -ha. so if i add something then there you go so why do i have font size two times i don't know so if i get rid of that i, I think i'll go with three okay so then i can easily come here and do this whoa too quick and this will be my minus that's my plus all right that's cool now i need to uh, plug in a some value here so, I mean, we could just come here and create a, another component, a value component, and that is going to be another style div. So another actually component. So I can say value equals to a styled dot div. You can create a paragraph, a span, uh, whatever pleases you, but uh, I'll just start with, a, I mean, I'll use a div. So we will give it a margin and I played around with this and I thought this looks cool but you know you can change it of course uh we'll just uh, speed this up here okay so with that all nice and uh, in place as you can see by doing this we have uh, styled this value here so there's currently nothing in here. Uh, we're gonna start putting, uh, I guess, some stuff in it. So I can, uh, for example, come here and I could say, you know, um, for value, and I'll, I'll, I'll plug in a nice value in here. But of course, now we wanna add some event, I guess, click handlers and stuff, so we can, uh, you know, tap into the button click events. The one thing I see, this four is kind of hanging up in the air. So we might want to fix this and let's see, maybe on the items, center that, there you go. So that fixes that. All right. So let's start with the uh, minus button, I guess, and we can add a click handler. So I can say on click, click, and let's just say, uh, we'll call it decrement right and for the this whoa i can oh man i can say uh increment right so i can then come over here and i need to define these functions so let's say decrement is equal to uh let's say console.log decrement right so that's that, and then I can just do the same exact thing for the increment. So I'll say increment, and then we'll say increment. All right, so if I uh, if I hit these, so that's increment, that's decrement, pretty cool. So that works, so okay. And then what we need to do is we need to now somehow uh, increment this value. Okay, so to hold any value in React, well, we just use a state. So we'll say value, set value, use state. We'll use this use state hook. Okay, so let's initialize this uh, with zero. Then I can come here and using the uh, template referencing something, something, I can uh, add it. And then over here, what I want to do is I want to decrement this. So I'll say set value and you do V equals V minus one. And then I can take this and I can do that. 
Okay, so hopefully this should increment and decrement. Cool. Okay, so here's one problem. As you can see, the value uh, kind of goes below zero. And in practicality, I mean, unless you're making like a temperature app or something, you sh this usually, um, it shouldn't do that. And the other thing is, I, I keep on going and it just doesn't stop. So we need we need some kind of uh, clamping action and we need to specify min max. So how about we let the client specify these values? So we'll say min max. So these will come as props. So I'm gonna come back in my app.js and let's, how about we just throw in this here. So we'll say min is zero and max will be, let's say 10. All right, so that will take care of that. So save everything, save everything. No, okay, that's fine. All right, so we got that squared away. Now uh, we're not using it, so I think we should start using it. And um, so what we need to do is we need to see that if the value is more than max, then we set it to max. If it's less than min, then we need to, um, I guess, you know, uh, set it to zero. So for that, we will come here and create a clamp clamp uh, file. And what this will do is we'll do, do something like this. So we'll say const export it out first. Uh, clamp is equal to, it will take a min value and then a max value, right? And then on that, we call this other function Whoa. and then we do something like this we say if v is less than or equal to min then you uh, do min otherwise if v is greater than or equal to max then you do max otherwise just give me v so if this makes any sense so what we're saying is we're calling we're going to call this function with min and max then we will call uh, that with the on top of that we'll call it uh, with this value of v, and then we just do a comparison, right? It's a ternary operator. So that's what's happening. So the way you use this is you do something like, um, so I'll come here and I'll say const, and then I'll say clamp v, clamp value is equal to clamp. That's so our clamp. We pass in the min and max right so so far uh, it's not going to do anything but if i come here and i do this and i'm going to call this function and i'll do the same here i'll call it like so all right so now let's try this so if i go below see it's not going below zero if i go and try to go above 10 it's not going to go above 10. so uh, the way it, see, like we're calling that function with the min max, then on top of that, we call with a value, a current uh, state or value that we have. And that's how we increment or decrement this. I hope that makes sense. So now that we have the component nice and uh, ready, uh, we need to supply this value back to the client because, I mean, it doesn't mean anything to the this guy. So over here, we would need some way um, when this happens, and we will need to call a, let's say a callback function over here to change the value. So for that, what we can do is in here in my app, let's say whoever that is, I can, uh, you know, uh, throw this value thing here, the state. Okay. And I'll say use state, and then we will just initialize it with the main value. And it doesn't know what min is, so I will actually define it for it. Max. Whoa. That. Okay, so I have that, and then I can actually get rid of this. I can get rid of that. So now we have that uh, going here. Let's throw this on separate lines. So we have that. All right, so we all we need is just supply, a, let's say, a method, which we call on change. And when the onChange happens, all we do is take the value and set it. Like so, we just call our um, our state. Also, then we need to supply this value into the um, our component, right? So currently it doesn't have it, so we need to give it 
So we'll say value and then we'll say on change. So with that, I don't need this. And I don't need none of that, to be honest with you. And all I need to do is, so when on click happens, right? Remember, we said we we're going to call that on change function. So we will do something like this. Whoa, what happened? Okay, so I'll come here and I'll say when somebody clicks, you call the on change and you clamp the value just like we were doing before and value minus one. That's it. And the same thing we do here. When somebody call, clicks the plus button, you call the on change with a clamp value of value plus one. Okay, so if everything worked well, then I should be seeing this number incrementing. That's beauty. But now I can come here and I can, let's say, use this value here. H1. Right, so I'll come here. So here's the value. And if I increment, they're in sync. How cool is that? So then you can use this uh, on the client side, wherever you want to use it. You can pretty cool easily use it. All right, so as a bonus, uh, I will also add some more uh, styling so that we can make it a little bit beautiful. And for that, I will just type some CSS. So no need to, I guess, watch me type it. I'll just. Okay, so one thing uh, I will do is just change these buttons now that I'm done with the styling to a little bit more fancy uh, for some uh, icons. So we will come here and instead of this minus here, I'll say that it's a font awesome icon and the icon is a minus square. Close it off, uh, like so, and then I'll copy it, and then I'll come here, if it will let me, and then all I have to do is change this to a plus, the fa plus square, a square, uh, what happened to you, it's not, uh, here you go, so I will say, just need to import it, Plus square. Yeah, that works. Don't need that. Don't need that. Well, we need it. Okay, so here we go. Nice big buttons. You can hide this if you want. Okay, uh, the other thing I'll do as a last thing, I can actually still click on it. The button should be disabled if I reach my limits. So maybe we should do that. And to do that, I'll just create some uh, nice variables. I'll say disable. Disable min and when you disable it well when the value is equal to min and con disable max When the value reaches max, that's how simple it is and then you can just come here on the button and Then you can tag into the disable property Like so and we'll say disable Disable min right like that and there you go, that works. So now we need to do the same for the max. And I will come here and I'll say disable equal to disable. Come on, give it to me max. So let's see if I go to the top. Yay, perfect, that disables. So there you have it. Uh, if you want more tutorials in React or any other programming language, just shoot me a line and I'll try my best. And if you want a project-based uh, thing, then also shoot me a line and bye for now.